Welcome to the Anuki TV Tournament Saga 1, Round 1B. This is Siler and Sisiu from ITM vs Stickers and Surfingmen from the Compact Gaming Community. Both sides have opted to play Soviets, so we have a first mirror matchup in the tournament. This is going to be interesting indeed, and we are on the map Bazerville. Now, I've been asked uh, about the maps and the map selection quite a few times over here. We have Siler on the left, which means Sisiu will be on the right. Uh, but coming back to the maps, uh, we couldn't agree on free maps. I'm going to allow both teams to agree on free maps and then I'll randomly pick between them. If you can't agree on a map, what happens is the Anuki TV Safety Protocol 2, where basically each team picks one map, I also pick a map, and then I randomize between them, which basically means everyone's bone. And Stiggers has well, just got a huge blob of infantry. They're being chucked grenades at. And already just a huge loss for Stiggers. Ah, oh, I hope to see that this game isn't over before it's even started. Stiggers only has one guy left against Silar. Stiggers! Stiggers, you've interrupted what I was saying. How dare you be interesting this early on in the game. You could at least survive a little longer. Anyway. Sisu and Sylar, they got to play on their map choice, they chose Bazerville, and it randomly chose Bazerville to be played on, so unfortunate for Stiggers and Surfingman, they won't be uh, at the sort of advantage, but remember, the point of this tournament, and the point of the whole map selection, is not to be good at a few maps, it's to be good at every map, so whatever map you play at, you're going to be a solid player. Surfingman and Stiggers, they picked Farmland, I believe. I can't remember now. It was like five minutes ago, man. And I picked Nemegan. A good 4v4 map. Very urban. Apparently imbalanced, but um, you know what? I, I love urban combat. And like I said, I don't care. If you can't agree on a freaking map, I'm going to go ahead and pick whatever freaking map I like. Anyway, we see our first half track on the left for Stiggers and a fair few partisans in the middle. Uh, strangely enough, from Sisiu. Uh, we have a second half track now, so uh, it seems like Stiggers and Surfing Man kind of have like a mirror image going up there, both doing the same things, playing in relatively the same way, and I know a lot of teams have been practicing for this tournament, uh, trying to nail down their solid play style, and, uh, so I think that's going to be really good, we're going to see some good strong team play from all teams in a, a sort of different styles, and I, that's what I kind of like. And this half track, it has no problems with the partisans. They don't have any anti tank grenades. Uh, they can only use their grenades to take out that, uh, which is going to be really difficult. And that half track just runs straight through the line uh, and then retreats after it's done a load of damage. So, so far, great play from Surfingman. We've got a few infantry running around to the right hand side, but there's a machine gun in there. <laughs> wow, that backpedaling AT rifleman. There's, uh, yeah, I'll cover you with this giant AT rifle. If anyone comes up behind you, I'm sure to get them. That guy was a dude, but he obviously didn't survive long enough to uh, make any effect. And unfortunately, he wasn't there in time to take out that half track. That would have been swell. Uh, but anyway, on this left-hand side, we've got infantry hanging out behind the wall. Stiggers falling back to his second line of defense. He didn't have this point. He needs a little reinforcements. It looks like the half track has already been taken out. Good work from Silar locking down this area already. He's got a uh, more than enough to fend off any attacking forces. But already, wow, we've got a half track coming in from Surfing Man coming around this flank. We've got some pinging, warning his teammate that there's a half track coming round. The PKP in the back turns around and fires at the half track. Uh, I think Surfing Man could have refined that a little bit more. He could have ran that PKP over. Now he's just given the enemy. Given Silar and Sisiu a free half track, that's really bad news, really unfortunate for the compact gaming community. Oh no, giving away your resources, what are you thinking? I'm sure Surfing Man sitting in his chair going, Oh, I could have done that so much better. Uh, anyway, what the hell happened here? We've just got a flaming motorcycle, there's a load of black smoke coming off. Uh, and we have another PKP hanging out in the middle. Uh, it needs to get a better position than that though, it's very... But it's not really defending anything, it's not really assisting in the assault, but now this half-track comes into play for Sisiu. He's bringing that to the middle, and hopefully he can capture that central zone, bringing them up to three zones, and therefore their points can start ticking up. Sisiu not going to charge that half-track straight in and get it destroyed like a certain someone did. Uh, just checking up on this right-hand side, doesn't look like anyone's going to be aggressing that zone at all. We have a T26 coming up, that's sure to take out the half-track. Uh, Sisiu seems to have moved it back, but it's not back enough. <laughs> he turned that thing all the way around, tried to get that away, but uh, unlucky. 
it's not his half track anyway. The crew do survive, so always better to lose your opponent's resources than your own. You didn't really spend many money on it, so no real big loss. Checking up on the left hand side, we have this PKP still firing, then moving, then firing, trying to <laughs> implement some of his StarCraft play. You know, attack move A, attack move A, and keep retreating. Over on Stigger's side of the map, though, it looks like he has a T-34, which is going to be bad news for that PKP. It already looks like he's locking onto that target and trying to shoot it. Uh, a little bit hilly over there. Too many trees in the way. I think some of the shots might just hit the trees. Might hit the terrain. Problem? No, it does get it. It does get it. That's good news for Stiggers. He can move into the area. In fact, he's just moving his entire freaking squad into the area. Sila now saying, what counters a T-34? Hell yeah, another T-34 counters a T-34. So this is all going to be down to who plays the better micro of these tanks. I think Stiggers has a bit of an advantageous position here. Never mind, his turret's damaged, his main gun is damaged. He could reverse that out of the way, he's not going to. Hall Pierce now, bad news for that T-34. Oh god, which T-34 does Anuki mean? I mean, that... T-34, the one that has bad news written all over it and can no longer be occupied for it has no seats. Ah, oh, mirror matchup, say. You wanted to see a mirror matchup. I'm sure some people didn't want to play the mirror matchup because uh, I spoke to Butcher and I think Pandu and some other players and they've pretty much said all the same things. Uh, when it comes to a mirror matchup, they're just not used to that sort of play. They, they can think how a T-34... Um, deals with a Panzer free, but when it comes to a T-34 versus a T-34, they're not very sure on how that sort of plays out, which ones... You know, how do you use it? How do you use another T-34 against another T-34? Is it going to be enough to hit through the frontal armor? Or does it require a little bit more finesse in trying to get a flank off? Will it be easily destroyed? And all that stuff that we just don't really get to practice because we're just too used to it being allies versus Axis as the most balanced composition. Now for those of you who are asking uh, like, why did you make the rules the way they are so we can have mirror- whoa 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 rewind we've got a sniper <laughs> already picking guys off in the middle oh, I want to see him do it again um, already we've got a T-34 firing on the sniper extremely peed off just blind firing into that zone trying to capture that sniper and uh <laughs> it actually seems like that sniper prevented the capture of that zone for a little while longer. And because there's two neutral zones on the map, now there's only one. Uh, the red army that belongs to Stiggers and Surfingmen uh, have a huge advantage. Anyway, concerning factions... Uh, I'll keep panning around the map and seeing what's happened. But concerning factions, let's get this over and out with. Uh, why have I made the rules the way they are? Why is it that I... You know, any matchup is possible, because that's not going to be balanced if someone picks one faction and that faction is going to be weak against this faction. Well, partly it's because it's going to be interesting and I didn't want to have the same constant matchups. Secondly, because it's, it's an elimination and, you know, I could have it so we've got some fixed matchups and everyone has to choose which side they want to play as, but you're only going to get to play as that one side once. Which means that's going to be open up to people going, Oh, I didn't get to play Germany, that's why I lost. Because the enemy team got to play Germany. And, you know. and then there's another reason as well. That reason being that I want you to be good with not just one faction. You need to be good at this game in general. At at least three factions you need to be reasonably proficient with. You can't just select one faction and play that throughout the entire tournament. You can't just spam one faction. That would be really uninteresting. I imagine most people would probably end up picking the same faction. Anyway, that's enough explanation for that. We have a ZSU-37 for Sithiu, who is already firing right down the middle of that road. There's a machine gun at the end of the road for Surfing Man or Stiggers, one of the two. Who cares? As long as the ZSU could move up just a tinsy wincy little bit and take that out, that would be great. Also, um... We saw that T-26 get destroyed earlier. I think that was because of the ZSU firing right into the side of it. Over on the right-hand side, seems like Sisu's having a little trouble taking this area. Doesn't have much infantry devoted to it. Surfingman has some guards rifle there, some elite infantry guarding that zone. Uh, against Sisu's normal regular infantry, uh, you can see there's a definite difference in the firepower and body armor that they have. 
Surfing men still with a machine gunner behind that wall, covering that central position. Uh, this is the biggest problem I feel for Sisu and Sala right now, and they need to get rid of that. Over <laughs> on the left-hand side of this building, Stiggers uh, assisting in the middle and just taking out all that infantry with an elite SMG guard's rifle. Damn, that's kind of a big loss at the moment. There's been so much infantry casualties right now for Sisu and Sila. And they really need to get infantry out onto the field and... I think smokes right now will be good. Maybe not charging into tanks. That's also a really bad idea. Um, one thing I would highly recommend is if you're going to charge, send just a few infantry. Just one. Just find out if it's okay to cross the road before you put all your eggs into one basket and then smash it with a freaking hammer. Anyway, let's not be concerned by that. Let's be a little bit more upbeat. Let's be happy we've got an AT gun coming on the field for Sissy, which is going to deal with that T-30 tank hanging around in the middle that just gunned down all those infantry. Uh, oh no, ZSU got out in the open. This guy's repairing it. It's just like all shiny and new and... <laughs> oh no. Oh, he worked so hard on that. Made it all shiny and polished and it just looked spiffing good and that freaking T-34, oh, it just oh, it ruins my day. Now we've got an AT gun coming up with the field. Now, PKP has also been decrewed. Strangely enough, it's still in a weird, unusual position. It's covered by the building, uh, which means if anyone comes out behind the back of that building, it could deal with it. But I think Surfing Man is pretty much happy sitting on this zone. Sitting with his free capture points, his points are still taking up. We're almost at the halfway mark for Team B. No, Team A, sorry. The Soviets are winning. That's all you need to know. Sisu trying to charge one guy in and just get an AT grenade on that T-34. Uh, Surfing Man knew it. He pulled that T-34 back. Maybe bought that. Just a little bit of time to uh, for someone else to deal with that infantry. Anyway, back over to the left-hand side. Uh, looking around for that PKP because that can deal with the light vehicles currently approaching. The T-74... Stiggers is going to be the Opa, followed by the half-track full of infantry. Fortunately, the PKP is focusing on that half-track and it already damages it, so it comes to a halt now the infantry have to pour out. Fortunately, though, for Stiggers, it's uh, using this other damaged truck as cover, so it's not going to receive as much damage from that PKP as Sila would probably like to do. Uh, though he does get a great AT shot on that T-70. That was just the hyperbola shot of the world, and these cows are mooing all over the place. They know that that was the best shot in the history of the universe. It had so much range behind it, and on top of that, I think if there's enough room at the end of this video, I'm definitely going to put that as one of the highlights. I want to see that again. That was... That was good! Anyway, this left-hand point still being a problem for Sylar at the moment. He's almost reclaiming it. He just needs a few guys into the central position. Although he's uh, managed to take out a lot of infantry, he's managed to take out the T-70 as well, so a lot of resources have been dumped by Stiggers at the moment. There can't be that much resistance left over, although <laughs> really checking up on the map again, uh, my second checkup, there's not much for Silar as well. He also lost an incredible amount and uh, had to reinforce with new infantry, spent more money uh, to try and get his defences back as well, and we have this T-34 from Stiggers approaching on the left hand side as well and the PKP isn't manned, not that it will do any damage but on the right hand side we're going to half track pouring a load of guys out, we've got Molotov West. that's where he is, he's right behind that tank sneaky hidden guy with a Molotov all these infantry that they pour out, they seem to be relatively safe the half track explodes fortunately enough though for every single infantry they're far away enough not to be caught up in the explosion and it seems now that they're getting their second zone. They still need one more zone. They still need to work on that central position. And I'm zooming in on this jeep because that means there's a guard sniper on the field. And we saw that earlier. I do hope that that dude is A-OK. -okay. Uh, in fact, no, he's here. Wow. Or maybe we have two guard snipers on the field. I don't know. Um, but 